What's up, party people? This is Shaggy with my little ship build video. I see a lot of big and beautiful Starfield ships out there, Class C with all the trimmings, but no one's really focused on the Class A's. Small is beautiful and sexy in this game, and you can come up with some real treats just with a few parts and a little imagination. So, this is all about Class A ships. There are five designs, one for each of the five manufacturers, and they're going to have the following criteria. Each ship has to have a bed. Each ship has to have at least one weapon. I'm not worried about crew. I'm not worried about cargo. These are Class A ships. But they'll all have the best grab drive, the best reactor, and the best shield for that class. Because, you know, if you can, you might as well. The most important thing for me they have to be a clean build, and ideally less than 20 hab spaces in size. If you imagine the Deimos 1x1x1 companion way is one hab space, we're looking for a vessel that can occupy less than 20 of these. So these are going to be tiny. I don't want any fuel tanks on show. I don't want the grav drive sticking out the side. I don't want the shields doing the same. I want everything neat, tidy, tucked away, and beautiful class A lines throughout. So, if you're ready to go, let's crack on. We're going to go alphabetically, starting with Deimos. Orbiting Mars, Phobos, and Deimos. The star yard you want is around Deimos. You'll meet a guy called Nico. He looks like he's packing heat. And his ships going to do. They're a military contractor primarily, so their ships are going to be aggressive combat vessels. Like this one, the Sparrowhawk. As you can see, that signature Deimos aesthetic is around, in my opinion, birds of prey. They're going to have names like Hawk and Falcon, Vulture, Raptor, that kind of thing. And the ship looks bird-like. You got your little wings out the side, and when you hit that boost button, it does look like a trail of flaming feathers. And when it comes to combat, this one's nice. It's got the full weapon complement in stack one, and it shoots really nicely. As you can see, it nips around, takes out spaces, and it doesn't leave much behind. The boost on this is beautiful. I know I've got the perks, the engine perks and so on that give me the better boost and the skills to go with it. Get those. Honestly, when you're boosting with this thing, you're untouchable. You can nip around, shoot them in the bum. It's great. And nothing really touches you. As you can see, I mean, you wipe them all out and you hardly take a scratch. It's so fast, so maneuverable. And you can put this whole ship together in probably no more than 10 minutes. It's not that expensive as a straight upgrade to the Frontier, minus the cargo, I suppose. It's the way to go. You'll be shooting spaces in this ship all day long and be happy about it too. Next up, we're headed to Hope Tech. Hope Tech, it's on Palvo in the Valo system. If you go to your star map and look for Narian and then pick the other one, you'll find it. The ship technician's guy at the start, he's got everything you need, and he helped me come up with this. The space hopper. Yeah, it's a giant space grasshopper. Pretty groovy, right? But this is the problem with the Hope Tech suite. A lot of it has a very raw industrial look to it. A lot of connectors, pipes that kind of thing. The build can look kind of skeletal, and it doesn't lend itself to a small, smooth ship build. In spite of that, you put the cockpit together with this landing gear, and it screams bug to me. Heck, I should paint it green. I'll get Rimmer, Lister, and Crichton on board, call it Starbug, and have a wonderful time. Yeah, I love this little buggy dude. Again, really easy to build, really affordable, I think, again, you knock this whole thing up in less than 10 minutes. It's the smallest footprint of any of the ships you'll see today in that it can stand on a 3x3 hab space, which is outstanding. When it comes to combat, yeah, it's all right. It shoots well enough. Those uh, photon beams at the front there tend to cook most enemies, and you'll be shooting spaces quite happily in this bad boy all day long. 
Next up, it's Nova. To get to the Nova parts, you want to head to New Homestead, which is on Titan orbiting Saturn in the Sol system. Talk to the ship services guy at the start. He has everything you need. He's got the best gear, the best braces. He's got the cockpit with the stairs in it for your ladderless builds. And he helped me come up with this. The Bluebird Express. I love this guy. For me, this is the straight upgrade to the Frontier. Right out of the gate. It looks better. It's cleaner. It's smoother. It's got better cargo, better fuel, better weapons. It's faster. It's more maneuverable. And the look of it. That whole Nova aesthetic, for me, it's all about modern aviation. You can imagine the, the Tomcat, the Tornado, the Blackbird. They've all inspired these fighter ships, the futuristic Nova aesthetic. And I can't get over it. I love the look of this thing. And combat with it is a joy. You hit the boost button. You fly around, blasting spaces, watching them just disintegrate in the face of this streak of blue destruction. I think it's tip top. You've got to do a little clipping with this build. I'm afraid there's no way around it because that Nova cladding, the two length one, just snugly fits that cockpit brilliantly. And it prevents it from looking like it's got a, a weak wobbly neck. The fuel tanks, they lend themselves really nicely to the Nova cowling. And I think the engines as well, these white dwarf engines just help round off that Nova look. For me, aesthetically, this one's my favorite. Next, it's Stroud Eklund. I always go to Dalvik to interact with these guys because I love Havishaw. He's so polite, he's so kind. So head there, they've all the Stroud Eklund parts you need, and you'll come up with something like this. What? It's a flying pig. Okay, I just don't see the problem. Look at this guy. He's got a heck of a lot of pickup compared to the other ships. He's got a better crew count. He's got better cargo. He's got better guns. Heck, in combat, they're going to call him Mr. Pig. But fine, all right? Have it your way. What about this guy? The SS Good Times. It's named after my favorite Minecrafter. I love you, Scar. You're amazing. Keep it up, buddy. But it's the same as the pig. It's got the extra cargo. It's got the extra crew count. It's got the extra guns. You see, the problem with the Stroud aesthetic is the Stroud caps. They are a superb piece. They're excellent. They work with so many builds. You see these lovely fighter ship builds that they have on YouTube. Everybody be using the Stroud caps. And as you can see with this build, they snap to those Slayton Aerospace engines so nicely. It's a beautiful, seamless joint. The two, they gotta be together. Why then does it look like a giant space brick? In any event, like I said, what it fails on aesthetically, it more than makes up for in its other abilities. You get this guy out there, combat, it slaps, it shoots, it eviscerates spaces before you know it. Honestly, you could do a lot worse, and with a couple of tiny upgrades, you can boost that crew count and that cargo even more, making this a really good starter platform for the Stroud. Last on the list, we have Tayo. To get the Tayo parts, you head to Neon. You go to the Ryujin building, get in the lift, and you find the lady with the blue hair. She really loves her ships. And I do too. And with her help, you can get a little something like this. Now this baby's special. There is not a anchor point or corner to be found on this entire vessel. It is smooth, it is factory fresh, it's like it's vacuum formed. You can't even tell where the joins are anymore. And I love that. The whole Tayo aesthetic for me, it's kind of bubbly. When I first saw it, I got shades of XCOM Apocalypse, that old Microprose for Axis title, where it's retro futuristic. So you're all riding around in 1950s cars, it's just that they're hover cars and they fly. And that's the kind of buzz here as well. I love 
the smoothness of it. I love the roundness of it. And when it comes to combat, she's no slouch. She'll take out spaces just as easy as any of the other ships. And what's not to like? It's a big booty goldfish. Yeah, the wise ones out there, you're going to see that I've had to cheat. Because it's a class B reactor. Certain parts lend themselves to certain manufacturers. And in this case, the Tayo caps work brilliantly with these Nova engines. No other Class A engine would work. Believe me, I tried. So sacrifices had to be made. But when the output is something as cute, sexy, and wonderful as the Koi Koi Cruiser, I think it's okay. And there you have it. Five beautiful, titchy, tiny, Class A ships that I hope have inspired you in your projects and help you understand the different aesthetic associated with each of these manufacturers. As you've seen, certain parts work with certain other parts. The Stroud caps, the Slayton engines, the Nova engines and the Tayo caps. Certain shields kind of work with other things. Fuel tanks, you'll get the idea. The more you play around with it, the greater fun you'll have because the more you'll be able to discover and create. For me, shipbuilding in Starfield is a joy, and all this video wants to do is encourage you guys to do the same. If you'd like to see what these ships grow up into, you know, like Pokemon, you go out there, you battle with them for a bit, they want to level up, they want to evolve. If you want to see those evolutions, that's going to be another video. So please, maybe like this one, maybe even drop a comment. And with all things being well, I look forward to seeing you next time. Have fun, you guys. Well, I'm working down a mine, and I make a crazy fire. That might just be divine. It's a message that I'm gonna be a star born. Oh, yeah, I'm a star born. I'll get dressed up like the mantis that head off to New Atlantis Cause the unity's awakening, I'm a real star bomb